uh, we we're going to talk just a little bit about um, recreation and uh, what you did for entertainment. You, you told me that uh, one of the things that interested you was your schoolwork. That was almost your recreation, too. It was almost. And then, um, as I say, my family provided uh, many picnics mm -hmm. and uh, things like that, Part little parties at home for us. And uh, we didn't have the money to go to picture shows when they first came in. And all that we we had had we went occasionally, but we didn't have the money to run off every Saturday and do those things. So that uh, a lot of times when other children in the neighborhood were were uh, uh, doing that, uh, my mother would uh, set up a party for us at home, and she'd make candy and popcorn and all sorts of things, and tell us to invite in the kids and. And we would have a good time. Make your own entertainment. Make our Play own, games. Make our own entertainment. Uh -huh. We also made an awful lot of our own toys. How, what kind of toys would you make? Well, carts and and oh. uh, and uh, uh, then we would buy these real small doll, maybe penny dolls, and dress them, you know, and and, and build doll houses. And Was your father kind of handy to, oh, yes. to make things like that for you? He'd help us. Yeah. And uh, when you lived on the west side, you were close enough so it was easy to go off uh, <coughs> hiking or in the wintertime sliding in the hills. That's right. We had a homemade sled with real steel runners on it. It was a beautiful thing. That he had built? No. My, uh, uh, my mother's, uh, the husband, uh, one of my mother's cousins who lived here, uh, he made it for us because he worked in a foundry uh -huh. down here on, I think it was on Iona Street. Okay. Um, and um, another thing that we did that was so enjoyable, um, when we were quite small, we never went anywhere at night unless we played in the neighborhood. We played right around our house. My mother would sit on the front porch, and uh, all of the kids played hide and seek. Uh, uh, my mother would hide me under her apron. <laughs> and I was always the little one that went and got in free. <laughs> and then um, in the evenings, my mother and father very often would uh, sit at the table with us for a long time after our supper and uh, tell us all about their families and what they did when they were children for recreation. And uh, how and some of the little deviltry that they got they got into. Things like that. Uh -huh. You yeah. recollect some of those things? Well, sure. They told you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my um, my mother and her aunt, or her sister, I mean, uh, one time when they were little kids, they had uh, the school teacher uh, lived with each family part of the time as a part of her uh, salary. Sure. And. Uh, when she come to live with the uh, Leonard's um, grandfather, he uh, said after she left that uh, she, he said, well, she was high-toned enough to walk out eggs. So one day, the two of them thought they were high-toned enough to walk out eggs, and they took my grandmother's basket of eggs out and built a little bridge and walked over them. <laughs> Were and they, my were, grandfather, were they high toned enough to walk out? And my grandfather <laughs> stood a, a little distance away from them and he saw the whole thing. But he would not tell on those kids for anything. Yeah. It was just too and, much fun to watch them, I guess. That's right. And my grandmother would always declare that, um, that he took the basket of eggs and sold them to get uh, tobacco and, and what have you. <laughs> <laughs> but they just plain stomped on them. <laughs> plain stomped on them. And then after they did it, my aunt turned around and said to my mother, Maggie, look what you did. <laughs> and so they got a fire shovel and, and covered them up with dirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great story. <laughs> and then when they, of course, were older, when they, they often went to these barn dances and things like sure. that. And of course, my father and mother used to do a lot of that. Oh. It was about 1910, you said, when your family left Grand Rapids. 
and moved yes, away. Yes, that was after my sister and my uncle died. Uh, so mm -hmm. a time of tragedy, really, for your family. That's and, right. And uh, a time for a new, new surroundings. New surroundings. Well, my um, my aunt, uh, my father's aunt in Jackson, became ill with uh, pneumonia. And they didn't have anyone to take care of her, and my mother wouldn't leave her. Mm -hmm. And so then my father started uh, traveling back and forth to Jackson, and she had been there about six weeks or eight weeks, and um, uh, finally uh, Uncle John said, why don't, you, uh, why don't you look for some work here and move down? So my father looked for some work, and he found uh, what he wanted, and so he, uh, went to work in Jackson. In Jackson. And didn't you tell me earlier that Jackson is where your parents had gone on their honeymoon, so yes. they, were, they were going back to a, a place that was a happy place for them. That's right. Yeah. Where they started life together. That's right. How long did you live in Jackson? Well, I lived there until, um, until I went to uh, Washington in 1941. And the reason you went to Washington? To, uh, to complete the work on a bachelor's degree in nursing because I had taken the basic course in nursing three years at uh, Mercy Hospital in Jackson. And you, you said some additional courses at and the I University of Michigan. And I took the university, and I took other courses at the University of Michigan. And, mm -hmm. uh, then I, um, um, when I was ready, I uh, began to uh, think about a scholarship. Mm -hmm. And you would, I always felt that it was an answer to prayer that brought that, brought me a scholarship to Catholic University. In Washington, D.C.? Mm -hmm. During World War II? And the, it was after World War II. Oh, I see. And uh, so then you began a career, really, in nursing. That's right. Which you have only recently retired from. Yeah, and then after I got my bachelor's degree, I stayed on and got a master's degree. Mm -hmm. You worked in the hospitals around Washington, D.C. after that? I worked that? In, in one of the hospitals in Washington, and uh, I uh, uh, worked for, uh, before I went to Washington, you see, I uh, got my uh, diploma in Jackson, uh -huh. so I worked for the Jackson County Welfare. As a nurse? In, as a nurse, uh, uh, and directed the um, health service in the county uh, welfare agency, and uh, I was there for about uh, eight years, uh -huh. I think. And I saw the uh, the depression that was during the depression. I saw that uh, that the depression uh, go from no people hardly, maybe a hundred, a couple hundred people on welfare in Jackson for a ton of coal occasionally or a few uh, groceries or something. I saw that thing go way up to five thousand families in about thirty days, and they had no they had no. Uh, uh, organization set up for taking care of the sick. Mm. You were it? And I was asked to, to start the uh, medical department for the county. Mm. So I went in then and um, they gave me a typewriter and a desk and uh, a, a t typist a secretary and that was what I went to work with. Trying to provide some kind of help and medical care for all these people. That's right. You must have worked long hours. Well, I did, but uh, it was during that time that I also uh, finished uh, at junior college. In Jackson? In Jackson. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, so you had that career really until about 1970 or thereabouts? 61. 61 when you retired from nursing. Another, yeah. another time we should uh, sit and just talk about uh, how the nursing profession has changed. We could perhaps fill another half hour or an hour of tape. <laughs> I don't know um, about the nursing profession. I, uh, uh, you know, it's changed so much even since I've been out of it mm -hmm. <laughs> that, uh, and I haven't kept up with it to that extent because... Well, certainly when you started, uh, nurses really didn't have that much formal training, did they? Oh, no. That really, while you well, were we working, had, we this, had we had good formal training in the basics for taking care of patients. Mm -hmm. Yes, but not medical training. But um, we had well, we had some of the sciences oh, too. Okay. You know, because at junior college they gave me credit for some of my sciences. I see. Yeah. You know. 
that uh, the, the training for nurses has changed quite a bit in oh, the formal nurses' schools and uh, yeah, tremendously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe, maybe we'll have a chance to talk about. It. I know you want to get back to some research now. And, well, uh, I want to perhaps go home for a while too. <laughs> I may, I may get back again. I'm going to be here all next week. Good. I hope so. I want to thank you very much for taking the time to talk with me. Some of the, well, some of the incidents you told about are, are going to be interesting to, to others who listen to this tape. It's been enjoyable. You know, it really has been enjoyable.